What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So today we're going to be working on a race car. If y'all saw the last video, I kind of mentioned it briefly that Moroso vacuum pump is not keeping up. It is getting some positive crankcase pressure in the valve covers, which is a bad thing. Above like 7,000 RPM, maybe a little bit lower than that. It's just not able to keep up. Now these rings are got pretty big. I've always lived by the philosophy, if you gap your rings too tight, everyone will know. And generally, if you gap them too big, only you will know and you'll have a little bit of blow by. But uh, that may be a problem with the vacuum pump. Now, one of the things with the vacuum pump is also, we learned this about five years ago, seven years ago. We tried vacuum pumps. And as we started making more power, they couldn't keep up. Took them off, just went to regular vent cans. But what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make this thing be easier on oil. So if I can make a vacuum pump, one of these big ones, if I can get one to work, it will drastically help with our oil change intervals. Now this is my last attempt. Let me show you what we got. Go to turbojohnracing.com, grab yourself some merchandise, comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks guys. So this is the pump we got. We got the Moroso pump on it. And this is the four vein pump, but it is in good shape. It works good. It makes decent vacuum at idle and on the trans brake. It doesn't really make a ton because we're only at like 3,800 RPM. So the speed of the pump, uh, the way I've got this thing pulleyed is about 64% of engine RPM. And so it's a little bit overdriven. I mean, generally they run these at 50%. So if you had a 28 tooth uh, pulley up here, you'd have a 14 tooth down there. I've got a 19 tooth and a 28 tooth. So that speeds it up a little bit. Uh, but one of the problems with these Morosos, which all vacuum pumps, generally the majority of them, the veins slide in and out. And so they tick. And so a lot of the videos I've been hearing the clicking of the pump sounds like valve train noise, but it's actually not. It's the vacuum pump and that's the veins working. I was talking to a few people and uh, one of my buddies uh, sent me a message and he said, man, I've got a GZ products uh, VP 104 and he's like uh, he had it on his car but it was pulling too much vacuum so he was like man if you want to if you want to buy it I'll sell it to you at a deal and so I bought that thing and we're going to try to stick it on so it just came today. Josh gave me a good deal on this sent me a nice cool sticker we're going to throw this on the race car too y'all go check him out on his YouTube channel uh, one bad s2k race and he does a lot of uh, racing up there in the mountains at airport he does a lot of flagging he does a lot of racing up there he created a YouTube channel as well so I appreciate it, Josh. We're gonna stick this sticker on the car and we're gonna try this pump. Check this thing so out. So this is the GZ VP104. So I gotta change the fittings around a little bit. I also bought the regulator. I called that. Uh, that's gonna screw into this middle port here where the Allen plug is. And so I bought the regulator, which we're gonna regulate the, the pressure down. This thing is significantly bigger than the Moroso. We're gonna use that same pulley on it and stick it on and Hopefully, oh, we might not be able to use that pulley. That pulley may not work. Uh, well, I guess that's the first thing we need to do is make sure the pulley's gonna work <laughs> because it may not. But it looks like it will. It looks like it's it's hard to tell. But uh, it's probably the wider version. It looks like there's two two uh, two patterns here, so we may not be putting this thing on anyway. But uh, anyway. So I don't know, it's a little bit bigger, it's a lot larger. The way this thing works too, it doesn't have clicking veins. And they apparently have, it's got like a camshaft or a crankshaft in there and the wipers go in and out. But that thing's supposed to move a lot of air when you go to their website. Uh, Star is another one that's supposed to move a lot of air. I didn't see any stars available. Um, that one doesn't have much runtime on it at all. So we're gonna stick it on there if we can get it on there. And one of the things that I do that might be in, issues i run a number 16 line here so uh let's play with nc all right guys well we were just getting this thing pretty close here so i've got the moroso uh pulley on this thing it's a 28 tooth pulley and i've got the other pulley off and i was just counting the teeth and so this one has 28 teeth and the other one the drive the crank gear has 20. so i thought it had 19 but it's actually got 20. So this pump freaking looks amazing. And this thing is, like I was saying, they, there's some, some pictures of it and the veins do not stick in this ever. One of the problems with the Moroso ones is, and all the other ones is they get oil in them and they're not designed for oil. And so, you know, the veins have a hard time coming out. And when I pulled that Moroso off, the veins were moving out, but they were moving out pretty slow. 
So that's why, you know, you have to be very careful on how much oil gets in them. They work really good when you have an oil separator on them, which I don't have. But, uh, so we're going to stick this thing on real fast. Um, we got 20 teeth on the, on the crankshaft, 28 up here. So it's a 0.714 when you do the math. And what you do is you divide the, the 20 down here by the 28 and that gives you the RPM. So this pump is turning 71 and a half percent of what the engine RPM. So I just called GZ to make sure I wasn't gonna overrun the pump. He said the maximum RPM on that pump is about 6,000 RPM. So we're gonna calculate, when you calculate that out, 8,000 RPM or so, uh, it's gonna be at like 5,700. So we're gonna be at max capacity there. So maybe that Moroso, the reason we were getting so much pressure uh, on the last pass is I did clean that pump uh, before we went to Knoxville, but I did not clean it uh, after Knoxville. So probably those veins were just sticking. So I'm hoping this is gonna be my my good solution and it can keep up. Uh, now these are half inch ports. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to make a custom fitting uh, because I've run a number 16 line. So that's pretty big. I'm having a hard time finding uh, a fitting that goes from half inch NPT to number 16. I mean, that's a big discrepancy as far as what the line size is. All right, guys. Well, like always, I'm an idiot. Uh, pump is on there and we got the belt mostly lined up. It looks like it's probably gonna be okay. Uh, so we got all these ports, of course, and there is a plug that goes back there in the back. I completely forgot to put the plug in it. I just saw it laying on the counter. Um, uh, also, uh, this is the, the valve the pressure regulator valve. So this will actually screw in right here in the middle. So that'll be easy to do and easy to, to screw in. Um, something else I had to do too, since it, like I said, it was going from a half inch to number 16. Maybe I should go to number 12, but number 16 is probably okay. Uh, I, had to, I had to basically make some fittings. So I took two fittings and welded them together. Uh, got them teed up. Looks pretty good. Uh, you can see it's turning white. It looked like it had that galvanized coating on. I got most of the coating off, I thought, but uh, yeah, hopefully I didn't breathe in a ton of it. Breathing in that zinc is not good, but you know, it is what it is. So uh, these are gonna go in. So let me take the pump back off and I'll go ahead and stick these back in. And I still may not have, I still gonna have to, still gonna have to move the dog on that fuel filter. The fuel filter is not gonna work right there where it's at, not with this. So, I still got some work to do. All right, guys. Well, I had to rearrange some stuff, mainly the fuel line here. Uh, the way that thing was coming up, it was coming up right here where my fitting was, even with the shorter fitting. I mean, it was just, it was not happening. So we got plenty of room here. So all this is good. This is just some, some line that we had, uh, extra line, this big piece here. And I'll link those together. Not real happy with the way this is at the moment. So, probably gonna redo this. I need to get some more line. Try to crank it up. It's really cold. We'll see if it cranks. It, it may not even crank. So we'll try to crank it up, uh, put the computer on it, and see what kind of vacuum this one gives at like an idle and, and light rim. <laughs>
All right, guys, I gotta go get my laptop. I've also got this uh, three and a half inch screen hooked up. That seems to actually be working pretty doggone good, believe it or not. Um, all I gotta do is hook the power and ground up. I have not done that yet. So I cannot read pan back on it. I was trying to set that up yesterday, but I can't get it. Okay, so that thing's started up. It is at an idle, it's producing vacuum. I could, when I have my hand over the valve cover there, I could feel it. So let's hook the laptop up to it real fast, crank it up and then rev it up a little bit. See what kind of inches of vacuum we get. And then we might have to adjust this thing. Uh, looks like the belt is riding pretty, pretty close. Luckily, I mean, it's pretty wide. You see, it's not perfectly lined up, but uh, okay, let's check it out. All right, guys, so we're fixing and crank this thing up. I got my, my data log, my gauges pulled up here on the computer. There's vacuum, uh, basically uh, inches. So inches of vacuum is what we want. So the way this thing is set up in the gauge, I can't do inches of vacuum and PSI. I guess I could just do it all in inches of vacuum, but basically it's on PSI now. And so uh, one PSI equals about two inches of vacuum or two, two inches of mercury. So minus one would be minus two. So we need about minus five-ish will give us 10. So we want somewhere between 10 and 15. So minus five, minus six-ish. So let's see, let's crank this thing up and see what we can get for inches of vacuum. All right, let's see. It may not crank. Let it run but a minute ago. I might have to break clean it again. we just run it out of gas uh so one of the problems i was just tuning it trying to get it a little bit leaner uh it's a really really rich idling that's of course not good on the oil this motor i mean i've got new i've got new rings in the motor this year aluminum blocks though you know you get blow by uh it's you know it's just one of those things i got a lot of ring gap I mean, my vacuum pump may not be able to keep up at all it may just be you know my motor with boost uh, you know, it's just, it just is what it is. So we're going to try it. And, uh, if it does not work out, then, uh, we'll take it off and that one will be for sale. We'll get that one gone. Max aspirated nitrous car. I mean, it probably work just fine. You don't see many boosted cars with vacuum pumps. Like I said, I learned this, uh, five or seven years ago, but that was with, um, an aerospace one, one of the, the three vein ones. So this one's supposed to be one of the highest flowing ones out there. We'll see if it can keep up. Uh, it also depends on how good the motor is sealed up, uh, you know, valve covers and all that good stuff, uh, which I think they are sealed up mostly pretty good. We'll see if it keeps up. I hope so. Uh, but if not, I mean, you know, they're not really designed for, for boost, so I ain't mad at it. We're just trying it. All right, guys, comment, like, and subscribe. We'll see y'all soon later.